In the last video, we took a look at how to briefly create layers. And one of the issues that you're going to run into when you start creating multiple layers is losing track of which layer belongs to what element in your photo. Now, especially once you actually introduce selective layer masks. So how can we effectively manage and organize layers to make your editing workflow more user friendly? Well, that question I intend on answering in this video. Now, the photograph you're looking at is one I took quite a few years ago of Lady Bowen Falls in Milford Sound, New Zealand. Now, as you can tell by the amount of layers in this file, in the actual layers panel, that I've spent a lot of time editing this image. And this is an example of how complicated a file can become once you introduce layers. Now, in order to actually avoid your files turning out like this, we need to manage and organize layers. So what I've done is I've created another file that I've been playing around with to demonstrate how to achieve this. So I'm gonna close this particular file because as you can see down the bottom here, it's actually, with all those layers, it's 3.82 gig in file size, which is absolutely huge. So I'm gonna close that file and I'm gonna go, don't save. So as you can see now, I've got a new file open. Now, as you've seen thus far in the previous videos, all layers can be reordered, and it's key to get the ordering right of your layers, especially when making adjustments. Now to organize layers, Photoshop has a feature called groups, as represented by the little folder icon down in the bottom of the layers panel. Now groups actually allow you to place layers within individual groups created by you. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a new group. And as you can see, it creates a new folder icon. And what I can do with that folder icon is I can actually reorder it accordingly. So I'm going to place it at the top of all my layers. And then what I've done with this particular image is I've created several different layers here. And as you can see, there's two here called sky gradient, which I've just added a quick gradient to the sky. And I've also added a sky uh, level adjustment which you can see there, and I've actually added a layer mask as well. So those two are specific for the sky. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of those two layers, and I'm actually going to drag them into the folder. And as you can see now, those layers have actually moved across. And they're actually sitting within this folder. And if I actually check, uh, click on the actual arrow of the group folder, you'll notice now actually disappear so they're actually within that group and what I can do is I can name that group now I can say sky adjustments for example so now I have a group specifically for sky adjustments so that I won't get confused uh, with my overall adjustments which are the other settings that I have here as well so I've got an overall level adjustment and I've also got a black and white adjustment and I've got a little vignetting adjustment that I did to the image as well. So as you can see, groups become really important once you start working on your image and creating multiple different layers. Um, so in this example, I'm also going to create another group and I'm gonna call this sort of overall corrections. Overall correction, can't spell. Overall corrections and I'm going to drag those three layers into overall corrections. So now I've actually ordered my uh, groups and I'm actually gonna currently grab my overall corrections and I'm going to remove it from this existing group here, which is the sky group, because at the moment that was a little bit out of order. There we go, so now I've got the two groups because um, I actually created that group within the group, which I don't want to do uh, in this example. And what I've got now are two different groups. And what I can do is I can actually uh, right click on this and go group properties. And I can actually specify not only the name, which I've already entered, but a particular color label. So I can make, say, for example, my sky adjustments red so that any layer that I add to that particular group will have a red uh, label applied to it, as you can see there. And then I'm going to also do for my overall corrections, group properties, and I can also specify another 
color label, which I'm going to do green. So now you'll notice here that they're individually categorized into the specific groups and they're lay they actually have color labels which is really handy for distinguishing which particular layers belong to which elements within your photograph now also you can actually if you wanted to right click on a on a specific layer and go layer properties and this will actually give you uh, a similar window icon which will allow you also to select a color label so you can actually if you wanted to have an individual color label for an individual layer as you can see here so groups and labels are crucial to clearly distinguishing which layers belong to what and if you're anything like me you will want to make sure that you use them in order to avoid any confusion in the future